All right, and now we're gonna take our, our run through the last of the three major trade networks of this 1200 to 1450 time period. And that's the Trans-Saharan trade routes or sometimes referred to as the sand roads um, as opposed to the silk roads up in Asia. Um, here, we, we need to recognize uh, with regard to technology and innovation that, that innovations in existing technologies that had long been used are going to contribute to increased trade along this route. For example, um, the use of camel caravans and camel saddles um, to move goods across the Trans-Saharan. Uh, the Trans-Saharan Desert is massive and required innovations uh, like these in order to traverse. So, um, so North African merchants are going to be employing these camel caravans of sometimes hundreds, if not over a thousand camels moving across the desert. The goods traded along the, uh, the Trans-Saharan Trade Network are, are gold and salt, and then slaves going uh, primarily to North Africa and to the Arab world. Um, we're going to talk about that again in a later unit when we when we compare the slavery going to the Arab world to the slavery ultimately going over to uh, the Americas and some of the different natures of that uh, coerced labor system that are going to exist between the two. Um, like in other places, trade networks have a major impact on states. Trade wealth is going to lead to the growth of some sub-Saharan African states like Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Uh, these states are going to become Muslim due to their connections along the Trans-Saharan trade route. And, and the leaders of these states, for example, the leaders of, of Mali, like Sundiata or Mansa Musa, are, are going to see in Islam that, that reality, just like we have in the Islamic caliphates, that the leader of the political state can also be the leader of the local faith. And that gives that ruler a lot of political legitimacy. The kingdom of Mali is going to grow tremendously because of their trade. Trade, network, uh, trade connections on the Trans-Saharan Trade Network. Um, and that wealth is shown off by Mansa Musa as he takes his pilgrimage to Mecca. And along the way, he's going to be throwing gold out to, to uh, the crowds waiting to see him. Um, and so much so, legend says that he actually deflated the value of, of that gold and, uh, and caused a bit of a, uh, of a currency crisis um, in, that, in that era. So what do we need to know about the Trans-Saharan Trade Network? Technology and innovations in trade um, improved um, and increased the, the amount of trade going across this network during this period, which is the exact same thing that we're seeing on the Indian Ocean Trade Network and the Silk Road as well. States that are connected to the Trans-Saharan Trade Network will become far wealthier and more powerful than they were before. And along with the trade goods, Islam is also going to spread across this trade network into Sub-Saharan Africa, just like we see Islamic uh, merchants spreading Islam in the Indian Ocean trade network, just like we see religions like Buddhism spreading across the Silk Road. That's it for today.